Let's look at how you can have a region conform to the tempo of the project and to the tempo changes that you make, whether it's a new recording or an imported file. And that is done with the flex and follow option. That is actually linked with something we have already looked at, a smart tempo. And that was part 14 of the series. In that video, I have deliberately left out a few functions because if you are following the series from the beginning, as a beginner, some concepts will be very confusing and advanced for your level. So it only makes sense that we have a look at the more advanced functions as you're getting better with logic. So flex and follow has to do with how a region will automatically conform to the project tempo. Let's look at a simple example here. So the project tempo is 120 and I have this drum beat that is also at 120. So let's listen with the click. And I also have this rhythmic synth part, which is at 110. As you can hear, it is slower. Now I will press G as in golf, so that we can see the tempo track, so we don't need these. Now let's use smart tempo to conform the tempo of the region to the tempo of the project. Now again, if smart tempo doesn't make much sense, you can refresh it by watching part 14 of the series. So double click on it, go to smart tempo. It's already analyzed, but if it's not, you can always go to edit and then click analyze or you can analyze it again. And then you can choose, let's choose apply region tempo to project tempo and see what tempo comes up on the tempo track. Yes, apply. So that starts here. Now, as you can see, it's definitely around 110. And here's where flex and follow is helpful. If I take this region as is and move it underneath the drum beat, it will still be out of time. So let's do that. I think that's not, uh, yes, logic as always. Actually, Let's have a listen. But if I turn flex and follow on, that will of course turn flex on. So select that, even though you can't see it up here. So let's command F. And as expected, it is the wrong algorithm. So let's go with polyphonic. Now, if I take this region and put it underneath the drum beat, since the tempo after bar 11 is 120, this region will automatically follow, hence the name flex and follow, the tempo that we have set. So let's do that and let's have a listen. So it follows the tempo. This will of course follow any tempo change that is made on the project but only for the regions that have flex and follow enabled. For example, let's go to bar 22, let's put a tempo marker here, and let's take it down, let's say, I don't know, 100. Okay, now if I move the drum beat here, nothing will happen. It will still keep its original tempo. But if I move any of the regions that have the flex and follow option on, then they will automatically conform to any tempo change. So. As you can see, it follows the tempo of 100 now. Now, another thing that I want to mention is that we get three options for when the flex and follow option is on, enabled. So we simply have, let's choose this one, we simply have on. That means that the region will follow tempo changes and it will, make, it will make sure that the main points of the region will match the tempo we have selected. For example, let's go to the beginning and look at the tempo markings here. Now, you can see that a few sections go on for one bar, but if you go for more, for example here from five until the end of eight, we have four bars that follow 110. Now this option, 
on will leave this as is. It won't change anything between these two tempo markings. And by change, I mean quantize. But with on plus align bars, it will use bit markers to make sure that the section is quantized on its bar. So here and here and here. Hence why, uh, if you click on the quantize option now, the one-to-one -one option is not available because it is already being applied. Similarly, if we go to on plus align bars and bits, as before, it will use bit markers, but this time it will conform the region to project tempo at every bit. So if we zoom in a bit, so it will happen here and here and here for every bit. So. Similarly, if we go to the quantize option, you will see that the uh, half note and quarter note are also not available because they are already being applied. So let's go back. Now, if you are at an older version of Logic, you will only get the on and off version. For the newer versions, you also get these two options. Now, lastly, the way uh, Tempo behaves when you move a region depends on which tempo mode you have selected. Let's quickly look at another example. Say that, okay, let's see. Say that I want this trumpet to follow the tempo of this region here, and more specifically, follow the markers we have followed, we have set with the smart tempo. So let's delete that. Let's delete these two. So like before, I follow the same procedure to get the tempo markings. So I will turn flex and follow on for the drum beat. Okay, then I will change my tempo mode to adapt. And now I can move my synth region underneath the drum beat and the drum beat will conform to the tempo changes we have set here. So let's try that. And as you can see, and listen. it follows the new tempo changes. Now the very last thing I want to show you has to do with choosing the default settings for flex and follow for newly recorded material and imported files. So let's go to settings, so command comma, then go to recording, it's fine, recording project settings, and then go to smart tempo. Now in the middle, we have the defaults for flex and follow region settings. Here we can choose what will happen when we record new material or import audio files. So if I set new recordings to, let's say, on for example, then when I record something, it will automatically be analyzed by Smart Tempo and it will open up a dialog window asking you to open that Smart Tempo window to edit the downbeat and tempo. This is a bit confusing, actually, instead of telling you, let me just show you. I will con quickly connect my synth and I'll demonstrate. Okay, so I have just connected my synthesizer to my audio interface and I'll record something so that you can see what happens when flex and follow is always on. Let's go back, command comma, project settings, smart tempo. So there are two ways of going about it and they depend on what kind of tempo mode you have selected. So for this one, we will go with Keep Project Tempo so that the new recording will conform to that tempo, the tempo of the project. So I'll send this one off. So if we go to, let's say, 120, the new recording will automatically conform to 120. So let's try that without the click. As you can see, it has already been analyzed and quantized and set to the project tempo. So this dialog box that came up, if I click on show, it will open up this window so I can make some edits. Let's have a listen with the click on. As you can hear, it's dead on at 120. 
uh, I can of course you know keep the original tempo of the recording so all I have to do is go to edit and then go to apply region tempo to project tempo apply again and then it will change to the tempo of the recording okay now let's look at the other way so command comma again project settings and smart tempo so for this one we will go with adapt project tempo and you know you have that because of the orange line now the tempo of the project will automatically change for every new recording to follow the tempo of the recording and here's the other option that i want to show you i'm going to turn on trim start of new regions now logic will analyze the new recording and it will start on what it determines is the first downbeat and it will trim everything before that. Now this doesn't work 90% of the time because my synth has noise and it messes up the analysis. Also, some very good advice. Whenever you're analyzing tempo, just trim any silence uh, before and after your region. Now let's try it. Let's go without the click. And as you can see, the project has changed, the project tempo has changed to that of my recording. Oh, and the trim silence has actually worked. That's good. And as you know, it's not destructive, so I can just always go here and extend that if I want, you know, that silence part. Let's have a listen with a click. And that's it. Now, as you can see, you can use this method as an automatic quantization when you're recording. Not with the adapt, the previous one with keep tempo. And that will automatically correct your tiny timing mis mistakes. And that's good for certain parts that you, you just can't get right. And you're, you're playing consistent rhythms. So let's say you have a section that you only play eighth notes. So you can record that and it will automatically quantize everything perfectly. Now, I don't really like this method, to be honest, because it doesn't sound very human, but the option is there should you want to use it. Remember, though, it's audio, so it doesn't work as well as it does with MIDI. Now, let's go back to settings. Project settings, smart tempo. Now, what I have demonstrated here with the recordings goes for the set important files too, as well. So, exactly the same thing, but instead of recording it, you are importing it. Now, the last option here we will look at, at another video. And that's everything about flex and follow. Actually, that concludes the lessons on flex time. Thank you.